Actual hand placement and grip. Five degrees. You're going to angle your fingers 45 degrees. This portion of the hand, as well as the back of the hand. Flexation on the forearm, on the shoulder caps, and on the wings. Nice. Yeah, perfect. If you want to have a nice, clean muscle up, of course, what you want to avoid is a swing. The hips are a major factor in terms of the initial drive. So then the question arises, well, where do you generate momentum and the energy to elevate? Flex my hip. I'm going to tighten and I'm going to contract to train this main region and section of what you're going to be utilizing for your initial spark. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh to all of our disciples, YouTubers, and viewers. Welcome back to a new video on Rip Right HD. Today we out here with TD, well known um, on Team Boss Life. And we just had a great calisthenic um, workshop for beginners. But right now he's gonna show you some of the key elements to why he has won the muscle up competition. Although he's 50 years old, he has beat out guys in their 20s, in their 30s, and the likes. So, so let's show. Okay. One of the things that's very crucial is from the initial aspect of the muscle up itself is the actual hand placement and grip. One, the width. The width is gonna vary, of course, from individual to individual. One key factor that we wanna start with is we wanna go from waist width. For every individual, it may vary because of the upper body portion. Might differ from the waist uh, variations itself. But you're gonna go from the distance of your waist is the distance that you're gonna place your hands on the bar. That's for one, in terms of width. Two, once you grab the bar, cupping the bar, you're going to angle your hands 45 degrees. As opposed to your hands being 90 degrees with the bar, you're going to angle your fingers 45 degrees inward, not outward, inward. And you're going to have the callus of your pinky resting on the bar with the fingers over the bar. If you can, you want the knuckles of the hand to be at the highest portion of the bar upon placement the other hand as well at the same time so what you're going to have is from the top the knuckles are at the highest portion of the bar and this portion of the hand as well as the back of the hand at 45 degrees so you're angled 45 degrees and the fingers are 45 degrees down both hands width of the waist from there what you're going to do is you're going to rest your weight on your body you would be hanging to a point where all of your weight is suspended and then from there you would begin your elevation and your pull one key factor that a lot of individuals may not be aware of that if you want to have a better than average muscle up you're going to have to start to incorporate the hip flexors a lot of the people may not be aware that the hip flexors are part of a successful and clean muscle up so if we can we're going to have rip go through just basic to show the people the hand placement the width what we're going to do is we're going to get both hands to a width of what is suitable to the waist you might go out a little bit more than average because your upper is just a slight bit wider than the waist we're going to cut the bar and then we're going to angle in and we're going to come up to a point where we have these uh, at the highest portion the back of the hand 45 down the front of the knuckles coming 45 down and then from there what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to uh, allocate the weight on the arm as you can see he's at a position now where there is flexation on the forearms on the shoulder caps and on the wings Everything at this stage is ready for him to pull. One thing that's very crucial is that there is some activation of the hip to a point where you can start to pull from the hip, releasing air from the lower core as the individual is starting to pull. And this is part of a successful and better than average muscle up. As we said, we're gonna come up 
the hand, cup under the bar, 45 degrees, fingers over. We just need at least three because he's going to get you from the front and then from the side. G. Hand up, cup, angle, fingers over. You can readjust to your liking. Nice. One. Side. Side D. Over on the other side. Side. Opposite. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. So that's giving you an understanding in terms of width. You want to be waist width so that you can accommodate the shoulders to be able to rock forward to be able to rock back. One thing you don't want to do, you don't want the shoulders rising up. You don't want them riding down. You want the shoulders stabilized to be lateral and to not rise up. You don't want them to collapse down. Okay, okay and you're saying the hips. The hips are a major factor. The hips are a major factor in terms of the initial drive. If you want to have a nice clean muscle up, of course what you want to avoid is a swing. So then the question arises, well where do you generate the momentum and the energy to elevate. It has to be more than just the upper body strength. We want to be able to tap in to the lower, lower core with the hip flexor so that you can generate a snap as the hip is being flexed upward. The lower abdomen is being released in terms of the air that you have inside. And, and when we start talking about that portion being weak, what are some of the things you recommend to strengthen it? You know, like other other ways to strengthen your hip flexors, just regular core exercises, sit-ups, you know. What I, what I would actually recommend for an individual to do is laying leg raises, and then in addition to the laying leg raises, what you can start to do is incorporate what they refer to as the heels to heaven. Because what it starts to do now is... So we're talking... So for one... Right. So what this is doing now, we're working lower core, which is connected with the hip flexors. So although the emphasis is not primarily on the hip flexors in this exercise, it's on the lower abdomen. It's training the lower abdomen and it's strengthening the area that's directly connected with the hip flexors. So this is one thing that you're gonna do in order to help strengthen. Now, exactly, down, up, and up. Exactly, down, up. What, what this does is, this allows you to train this main region and section of what you're gonna be utilizing for your initial spark. This is what is going to be the initial trigger to help the momentum, to help kickstart you going upwards. Because what the goal is, is to get a major region of your body above the bar. And and, and I, I heard you say, um, this is why you go. Exactly. From the beginning of the muscle up, what I'm going to do is, once I've got in my hands, oh, it's a young kid. Once I've got in my hands fixated, and I'm adjusted to where I want to be, and I'm hanging, I know I have to have some type of driving force, some type of kickstart that's going to allow me to get up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to flex my hip. I'm going to tighten, and I'm going to contract. And with my lower core, the air that I've already gathered, once I've gotten up, and now I have a full stomach of air, I'm going to flex my hip, I'm going to release my lower core, and I'm going to push it out with a, a quick burst. What that's going to do is, it's going to condense this lower section of the abs with the hips. It's going to raise me up at this junction just a wee bit. So I'm getting closer to what? Getting the rest of my body above the arm. So I've already decreased even this section, even though it's a small section, I've decreased this range between it and the bar. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to condense the rest of my stomach. 
at the same time. And I'm not gonna push out all of the air. So I'm condensing, and as I'm condensing, I'm tightening the, the, the core muscles. I'm getting myself closer to cramping up and eventually getting above the bar. While I'm doing that, I got all of the upper body muscles pulling at the same time. So I have activation from lower core, hip flexors, arms, back, everything working in unison, but not all together at the same time. There's a portion that's jump starting, and then there's another portion that's saying, we're gonna pick up from here, we're gonna take you the rest of the way. So can we hear that one more time, a loud one, a breath, so that we can kind of get the, the gist of, of the breathing technique? Okay. And, I, and I, every exertion that you hear from the bottom, I'm pushing out every rep to jumpstart some motion to help pick up the lower portion and get it closer towards the bar. And I remember you saying, because you've been in multiple competitions, guys. If you don't know, he's been in multiple competitions and he's always placing, especially when it comes to muscle up. He said usually first place and second place is not 12 muscle ups and another person got 17, it's usually one or two reps, right? So you mentioned that there's a couple different things that set you a little bit above. And one was the hips. Do you have anything else that you would think or, or, or you could say besides the grip and anything else that you might have left out that would help you get right above to perfect that muscle up to, to keep it to keep it going to become number one when you're in that battle besides the breathing besides your grip besides your besides working on your hips because i remember you said three and that, right. that's the three right. right right anything else i would say stay consistent with it because some individuals they have good technique they have good form but at the same time you will see that they start to fatigue midway. So if they eventually finish with 14, 15, 16 reps, by the time they get to about seven or eight, they're starting to fatigue. So their grip form is starting to compromise. Mm. Their midsection is starting to cramp. And this is what is eventually going to slow them down that if you stay consistent with these forms from beginning to end, most of the competitions are just a minute. That, that, that aspect of just staying consistent for that short duration of time causes them to falter that you stay consistent is the difference between the winner that has 17 reps and second place that has 16. And he says, I was right behind him. I was right on his coattails. And they say, yeah, you know what? You was actually ahead of him, but he caught you at 12 mm. and he stayed consistent. And you and you drop. You drop. So, with the grip, with the hip flexors, staying consistent with it, and having a good breathing pattern throughout the rep, understanding when to breathe, when not to focus on breathing so much, just staying consistent with it for competition, it's a winning recipe. Okay, guys, you heard it here first. TD, Team Boss Life, um, in the building, scientists, stay tuned, stay ripped, six pack, big back, big packs. Indeed in the body, literal translation, is a lump of flesh, a piece of meat. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَتْ جَسَدُ كُلُّهُ And when that lump of flesh...